I'm going to be uh, showing a time lapse uh, for modeling this briefcase. It's very similar to the low poly briefcase that I did uh, previously, and this one's just a little thinner. Okay, so I'll, I'm just going to do some commentary uh, while the video is playing. So here we go. So here I am in Blender, and I'm just going into top view, and I'm going to straighten it or lengthen it out in the X, and we're going to make it a little bit uh, narrower in the Z uh, direction. This is starting from a cube. And then we'll select the top face and we'll bevel and delete the bottom face. And then I think I will get rid of the grid floor and add a mad cap. And then control R to add some edge loops and then straighten them out using SX0. So we'll straighten out all four of these. And then I'm going to take those two ones and I'm going to move them out and then these two and move them out. So I get equal spacing and I make the leather straps. E to extrude, Alt S, pull a little bit and we get that effect. Now we'll bevel the edges a little bit to go along with the theme, this low poly kind of view. All right, so we have what looks like maybe the top or it could be the bottom. And now we're just going to create the, the middle piece that would go sort of as a border just lengthening in the X and the Y, and then we'll extrude it a little bit, give it a bit of thickness. And then we want it to come up to where the straps are and cover the straps a bit. Now we're looking at the distance so that we're going to sort of shorten it a little bit in the X direction, so it's roughly equal. Now I'm going to select the faces, top and the bottom, so we can bevel this as well. So everything's going to have that sort of single bevel. All right, so now it's time to start working on the stitching, and this takes a little while. I'm going to bring the 3D cursor there, and then bring in a cube and in edit mode, scale it right down, nice and small. This is going to be like one piece of stitching, so just take a little bit of work to get it to the size that we want. Bevel the top and delete the bottom face. Just try to cut down on the polys where we can. And then we'll bring it down till it touches and sort of look at it and say, you know, does this look like a piece of, of stitching uh, to us? A couple more manipulations, and if the size looks good, I'm going to start on the angled pieces. Uh, it's a little bit easier to do that. It gets that out of the way. And let's get the size right so that I can fit a couple of them along the angle. And there we go. So we're going to switch to normal. Uh, and for the transform, it's a little easier to manipulate. I want to get a couple of them on that angled piece there. So I might have to adjust the size. We'll see. Just copy it down. Ah, it looks like I can get two. So let's adjust the position and that would be stitching on that part of the briefcase. Now we're going to copy one and you can reset the rotation to zero so that it's the orientation it was before. And then we'll array them in the y-axis along that top um, horizontal um, piece of the strap. Then it's just a question of figuring out how many are going to fit and what the distance between them should be. And that usually takes a little bit of tweaking. I wanted to get it similar to what it is on the sloped region. All right, so a little bit of tweaking on this, and then we will be ready to go. I'm going to copy that. All right, and then I'll take one of them, and then we're going to rotate this in the X once we... <laughs> get our views on it, rotate in the X90 so that we can put it along that straight vertical piece. All right, get it in a similar depth to the other stitching, and then we'll array it down in the Z. And we'll probably use this the same, see 1.4, looks like I'm going for the same distance between. All right, so we're getting the stitching there, applying that, joining those pieces and putting the origin to, to the uh, geometry. And now we're going to mirror these across to the other side. That looks good. It apply it, and we'll mirror those pieces across to the other side. And then we'll start joining those stitchings up and then putting them in other parts of the, uh, the strap. All right, so now I'm going to just copy them and just going to pull them across to there. And we'll have the two of them. Now I'll join these together and we will mirror those across to the other strap and apply that. So it's all going well. Let's join those together. Now what I would do is I would copy this piece and bring it down to make it the bottom. And then I look at this and I say, I'm not sure. Maybe I want this to be thinner. 
So let's see what we do. I think I'm going to go in, and at first I was thinking, well, I'll make it, I'll make it longer, thicker. So it's a big, big briefcase. But then I said, you know what? Let's make it thinner, and then let's use that as the top. So we're going to be flipping everything around. I'm going to rotate this, and there we go. So the one that I just created is thinner, is on the top. Now what we got to do is get some stitching onto there, and this is where I run into a little bit of trouble. And you'll see what I mean in a bit. So I'm going to set the origin of geometry, and then I'm going to copy that and flip it around. As I pull it up, we'll start to get it into position. It'll take a little bit of fiddling. But once I do, I don't realize, I guess at this point, that I had a bit of stitching overlapping. And you'll see that I'll have to do some deleting later on. So I'll, I'll show you that in a bit. All right, we're just trying to adjust where the stitching should be. So I'm going to pull it forwards a little bit. And yeah, adjust that. You see the stitching at the, on the bottom? Now it's underneath the stitching. And I don't see it at this point, and so I'll get a little confused. We'll have to fix that up. But we've got our top and we've got our bottom. And now I'm just selecting that piece because it's going to make the, the sort of the locking mechanisms. I'm making it out of a plane. I'm going to scale it down and get the right size that I like in the position. All right, try to get it relatively central, looking at it from the front. And then we're going to bring it back and then extrude it forward so that it goes through the strap and through those sort of boundary pieces. We'll also give it a similar bevel. It's low poly. All right, delete the back face, make it a little bit longer, and then pull it back into position. All right, I can do the same thing on the other side. I'll be mirroring this over. Now, here's where I run into some trouble with stitching. I've got some overlapping pieces, and I still don't quite realize it at the point. And I don't like getting rid of them there, so I think I'm going to bring them back. But I still, now I'll get rid of those ones down below, but there's more to get rid of that I don't. See those lit up ones right there? And I don't really, I think I don't see them at this time. Or maybe I do go in and start seeing them. So, yeah, because I shorten things, we're going to have to get rid of all of that stuff. So I just select a piece and go Control-L, and then delete vertices, and that gets rid of, rid of all of it. Now, I may have some trouble on the back as well. We'll have to check that out later. But let's continue with that little locking mechanism, something very simple. We'll inset, and we'll scale it a bit, and then move it down. And we'll inset again, and we'll subdivide it into four, make it into a sort of a square, and then use loop tools to make a circle. And extrude this back a bit, and then we'll have to bevel that edge. So I'm selecting all the parts of that edge. Control B, bevel, give it that, that, that low poly look. Let's inset again, and I guess I'll uh, it probably extrude this outwards a bit. And then we'll have to bevel again, but not from there. Let's take the outside edge, not get any of the middle edges. We'll bevel that, and very simple structure. We're just going for something very low poly. Okay, we'll bring in a cube, and we'll make that sort of rectangle that you would push once you put the key in maybe and open the lock, you would push it to as a clasp. But we'll bevel it the same way and we'll get rid of the back face. Move it into position. Reset origin to geometry. There we go. All right, let's see. I'll change the, change the length and then we're probably going to just join that. Uh, well, we'll do a little bit more work here. Select those four faces and inset and then we'll extrude in. We'll do a bit more beveling to make it a little bit more noticeable. So it throws some light, catches some light, and we'll probably grab those inner faces and we'll scale them in. And now we catch light and it looks kind of cool. All right, let's join everything together now. And now if we put the cursor to select it on the briefcase, we can mirror that right across in the X and we get one uh, on the other side. Perfect, we can apply that mirror. And everything is going well. Now, we've got some problems with stitching on the back as well that we're going to have to deal with. Control L, get rid of vertices, and there are still some of them overlapping. And I, for some reason, while I was modeling, I, I didn't quite see it. Sometimes we don't, but hopefully I will pick up on it. There we go. We're cleaning up that side and a little bit more cleanup on this side, and we're done. And that all happened because the size of the top and the bottom of the briefcase were not the same. So now we can join things together. We've got our stitching done and I seem to be happy with it. Okay, let's join those as well. Yep, test that everything is joined together. 
Now it's time to work on the back hinges. I'm going to be making this out of a cylinder with six vertices. All right, sort of again going for that low poly look. Okay, rotating it around and then scaling it and bringing it into position. Uh, I could be getting rid of more faces uh, on this, but I didn't bother, uh, I guess, just scaling it, and then we're going to bevel it. And uh, well, we seem to have a cricket in the basement, so possibly you'll pick that up on the video. We'll see. Oh, I can hear. I don't know if you can hear that. All right, so I'm going to grab the two outer faces, and we're going to bevel. I'm going to scale it in the Z a little bit until we like the shape of that origin of geometry and move it along and then mirror it to the other side. And uh, I think we'll shall probably just be done with that at that point uh, with respect to those. Okay, we're going to bring in another cylinder since we're working on the back and we're going to create the little uh, legs uh, that this thing uh, stands on. All right, I'm creating it backwards right now. I'm just flipping it. Now I'm going to bend that in and we'll bevel. And we'll realize it's a little bit too big to fit uh, in the upper region. Uh, I'm realizing that right about now. And I'll start, I'll, I'll bring it up. It looks good right there. But if I want to have four of them, I'm going to have to do just a little bit of, of scaling work. So we're going to scale that down and try bringing it up and seeing if we can get a size that fits. Push it into the upper part of the briefcase. And we also got to make sure that it's long enough so if the briefcase was standing on it, it would stick out farther than those um, cylind cylinders that I just created. So let's make it a little bit longer, those hinges, I guess. So it's a little bit longer than the hinges now. So I'll delete the other one and we'll copy that down and we'll join them. Set origin to geometry and we'll just mirror them to the other side. So now I've got those. We can apply that mirror and join them to the body. All right, so I didn't join the hinges. I'm not quite sure why. All right, it's time now to make the handle. We're going to make this out of a simple cube, scale it down, and start getting the shape that we want in terms of the, the thickness, and bring it in and sort of position it roughly uh, in the middle. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create it backwards. I'm going to put two edge loops, select those squares, and inset, and then extrude out. And then I'm going to flip the whole thing. Right, I'll just do a little bit more work there. Get rid of those faces, and then I'll flip it. It's a little bit easier to make it in that orientation, and then rotate it around, and then push it in. Well, that cricket's really going for it. It's serenading me. Now, it's a little bit too long for my liking, so I go into wireframe, and I just pull it in a little bit. And then we'll do some beveling. So we'll grab the outer edges, and Control b pull them like that, and then all the top edges, and do that. Again, very low poly. Now I've created regions, and i got to make sure I'm in individual origins for this. Alt-S, or for this part anyhow. All right, and then there you go. There's my handle. And that essentially is it for the, the suitcase.